and then we can bring the tailstock up. And I usually start about a quarter inch from the from the end of the mandrel, and then I turn the lathe on and crank the tailstock up to the lathe so it finds the center. You don't want to make it too tight because you don't want to risk bending the mandrel. Remember, it's just a seven millimeter piece of metal. And because if you bend the mandrel, you're going to end up with a misshapen uh, pen blank as you turn it because it's going to be turning it instead of perfectly round, it's going to be turning it concentrically. And then you can tighten down the knurled nut a little bit to put some tension on these blanks so they don't slip around as you're turning. And I'll add my tool support. I like to keep it just a little bit below center. And then I line that up so it's about a quarter of an inch away from the blanks and parallel to the plane. I usually line it up with the bed of the plane so I make sure that stays parallel. Even if my blanks are not quite parallel, as I turn them down they'll, they'll end up being parallel. And I'm going to start roughing it down with a roughing gouge. And uh, we, we just want to turn it down till it's till it's uh, round and get rid of all these flat spots. And uh, that's as we do that, we're going to lose our markings. So one thing I should have done and I didn't, but uh, I'll remember to do it when I take these blanks off, is I generally take a magic marker and I mark just the inside of the brass tube on these two pieces so that after I take this off the mandrel I can still match up my two matching uh, edges. just uh, make it uh, as straight as as, uh, as it normally would be out. I won't get too creative with it but it uh, you can do whatever you want there's no there's no law that says the pen has to be straight or or uh, anything you can be bowed it can be uh, curved it can it can be virtually anything you want it to the only thing is you do have to stay to the level of the bushings, otherwise the parts won't fit uh, properly. So I think I'm going to switch to a, another tool from the roughing gouge. I'm going to switch to the spindle gouge and uh, just start working on my shape while I have plenty of wood. That way if I don't like what I'm doing I, I still got uh, enough wood left to, to change and, and uh, alter my design. Since the cap end is going to be tapered. I'm going to turn my guide just a little bit to help me establish that taper. And what I'll do is I'll try to keep the distance on this end the same as the distance on that end. And that'll give me the, the correct angle to start chopping down. shaped to the approximate final uh, shape of the pen. The rest I can do uh, as I sand the sandpaper. It's just a little bit proud of the bushings but through the sanding process that'll uh, end up being just in line with the bushings. And now what I have to do is to cut a tendon on this end of the blank that the cap or the center band, I should say, of the pen will fit onto. And that's what this little sizing ring that I showed you before, the purpose of it, it slides on here and it tells me how much I have to cut this off. So what I'll do is I'll cut this wood down 
to the thickness of this bushing, which should be just right for that. Uh, then I'll make it wide enough to accept the center band. So first I'm going to cut with a parting tool, a very thin parting tool, 1 8 inch. I'm going to cut a uh, 1 8 inch sizing band and when I get that just right for the uh, band to fit on, I'll widen it out to 5 16 of an inch and then that'll be uh, just the right size for the, for the center band to fit on. See, it goes pretty quick with this parting tool, so you, I have to be careful because I could take out. Now it's almost on, it's, it's just a little bit tight, so I'll just take a little teeny bit off, and we should be there. First, I have to mark out the 5 sixteenths of an inch so I know how far to to uh, widen it out. And then I'll take and widen it out and be ready for the next step which is the sanding. 